Hello everyone and welcome to the second game we'll be showing from the Champions Chess Tour of uh, Air Things Masters and for those of you who are interested in why it's called Air Things it's because Air Things is sponsoring the event. Uh, not sure what it is exactly, uh, this is basically their website, it says see how air quality impacts top chess players uh, in the world during the Champions Chess Tour. So I imagine it's some sort of a device that improves the quality of air. And uh, I'm very interested if uh, after this event finishes uh, to compare the well the, the quality of moves compared to the first tournament to see if maybe uh, maybe better air really did produce better moves because some people say that you actually can play better if you uh, struggle to, to, to get air like the, like the brain brain works better so I would be very interested to see if better air quality does produce better games uh, but uh, may, maybe something to consider after the tournament so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens so this is a game Daniel Dubo versus David Anton Giharo from round four of yesterday's uh, Masters uh, and uh, this is still the preliminary so day one uh, let's see what happens as I, I I I think this is the best game that was played yesterday, which is often the case when when uh, when Dubov is playing. So let's see what happens here. Uh, Dubov opens with uh, d4. No, he doesn't. Something again with the interface. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just refresh that. All right, there we go. D4 by Dubov. We have knight to f6. C4. Uh, sorry about that. That's a double story about that, so sorry about that as well. So e6 uh, and knight to f3. We have d5, the queen's gambit declined is on the board, and in the previous game we've seen Daragozin variation with knight c3 and bishop to b4, but here we have g3. Dubov opts for a nice um, a nice Catalan setup. So here d captures on c4 and bishop to g2, uh, making use of this uh, wonderful uh, long diagonal. And now c6. Uh, Black would also enjoy Fianchero in his bishop, but he simply doesn't have time, because if uh, a move like b6 is played, then you run into a lot of problems after knight to e5, and it's not very pleasant to play for Black. Uh, so after bishop g2, just c6, uh, and now Dubov castles. We have b5, uh, now uh, trying to defend the c4 pawn, and now... Uh, a lot of moves are popular here, you can go b3, a4, basically at some point you want to undermine black's uh, pawn structure on the queen side, Dubov first goes uh, knight to e5, puts pressure on the c6 pawn, and now bishop to b7, Giharo defends it, and now comes knight to c3, again here you could also just try and undermine the pawn chain, but Dubov plays the come knight to c3, it's not a new move, uh, it has been played before several times. Uh, we have a6 by black, now defending his pawn once again, and only now Dubov starts undermining those pawns on the queen side. So b3, c captures, we have a captures on b3, and just bishop to e7. Preparing the castle, bishop to b2, now Dubov has uh, Fianchero both of his bishops, so very exciting stuff, and castles by Giharo. And now comes knight to e4. Now, these two knights are excellently placed. The two of them control uh, a lot of squares. And you kind of want to uh, get that knight away from there. And uh, interestingly, Dubov already had this position twice. Once against Shirov, once against Sichev. And both of the games ended in a draw. Uh, in one of the games, knight to d7 was played. In the other one, knight to d5. But here, Giharo actually captures the knight on e4. So, knight captures, bishop captures. And now comes a5. Starting to push those pass pawns. If black and get a4 in somehow maybe he can even create a pass pawn already and here there is one game where queen to d3 was played ipato versus elianov in 2015 fide world cup uh, putting pressure on the h7 pawn uh, dubov does a similar move uh, only plays queen to c2 which also uh, puts the queen on the c file but pressures the h7 pawn so it's only now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game and it's basically where our game starts so let's see what happens the h7 pawn is under attack uh, Giharo defends it with h6. Uh, we have rook f to c1, putting more pressure on the c file, and the bishop to f6 now. Uh, attacking this knight here, and now knight to g4. And already this is uh, such a poisonous position that you have to be extremely careful what you play. You kind of don't want to allow this trade, then maybe captures, captures, and d5 comes in, opens up the diagonal of this dark square bishop. Uh, but you also want to be careful not to play something like bishop back to e7, because then you run into d5 immediately, and all of a sudden you are... <laughs> 
uh, in a terrible position because after you capture the pawn and not much else you can do here because then you just allow captures on c6 you get bishop h7 check king h8 and now knight captures on h6 and uh, it will be it will be a miracle if black can hold this with with absolute uh, you know uh, perfect play maybe it's possible but it's so easy to to blunder the position for example if you play d4 block the <laughs> the dark square bishop you run into bishop to g8 it's game over but uh, queen to h7 is the threat of checkmate since the bishop defends that and if you try something like this then knight captures on f7 is a beautiful smothered mate because the queen covers the h7 square so a royal fork smothered mate uh, so here uh, of course you have to be very careful and Giharo does not blunder the game he instead goes bishop to g5 and now Dubu just continues attacking the knight f4 so we already we've already seen what happens if you go back with the bishop uh, a lot of things can go wrong so here f5 and it is the best reply uh, by Giharo now uh, attacking two of Dubu's pieces uh, and here uh, not uh, playing knight to e5 not going f captures on g5 so only the obvious moves Dubu goes for d5 and now this is complete madness on the board we've reached the position from the thumbnail everything is hanging you can move the bishop you can capture here you can capture here you can capture here here like what do you play here so uh, again, a lot of moves are possible here. F captures uh, on e4 is the uh, is the best uh, reply here. Just uh, getting rid of one of the attackers. This is what Giharo plays. And now you'd expect uh, Dubov to capture back the piece, but no. Dubov just goes d captures on e6, and he creates a beautiful pass pawn here. If he can get f5 uh, in, it will be a, a defended pass pawn. So. Uh, what do you make of this position? Uh, here, it seems best move for black is h5. Uh, just attacking that bishop and uh, force uh, a knight and forcing it away because you don't have access to these squares. The bishop will just capture it that way. Uh, so the, uh, h5 would have probably been best. But here, Agiharo plays bishop to f6. And here... Uh, it's a very interesting position where black seems to be completely lost, but uh, you know just for fun Feel free to pause the video and try to win this position with white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds Again uh, the the very cool uh, king the USB stick if you've missed uh, the previous video got it uh, from my dad for Christmas uh, Really awesome stuff. It's not 64 gigabytes It'd be cool, you know to represent the number of squares on the board It's actually 32, but it's like you know one king 32 the other one 32 makes 64 so I, I guess it works so yeah uh, bishop to f6 uh, and now congratulations to everyone who spotted uh, bishop captures on f6 it would seem bishop captures on f6 produces uh, a winning position for white because after bishop captures rook captures you get queen captures on e4 uh, you, you get this beautiful, beautiful position for <laughs> white where it doesn't seem like black has a move here. I mean, uh, none of the moves make sense. You cannot uh, develop the bishop, you cannot develop the knight anywhere, the rook cannot come into the game. Uh, you're already threatening to pick up the rook here. F5 is coming. I mean, it's just a disgusting position for black to play. So congratulations to everyone who found that because Dubov uh, decided to go for a different one. After bishop to f6, he actually decided to play knight captures on f6. But now Giharo replied with not the rook captures, but rather g captures on f6. He said, okay, I'm going to try this. Queen captures on e4 and now queen to e7. Now everything is nicely defended and you don't really care about queen g6 check. You can easily block it with queen to g7. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, the other position w uh, does seem to be more forcing, but I also would have left this beautiful bishop. No way you capture with the bishop and leave the knight on the board if, if you don't see a force to win. So here f5, of course now this pawn is just a monster, I mean it completely dominates all of black's pieces. Uh, and here comes knight to a6, you might think why not c5 opening up the attack, here I get c5 in. Uh, the problem is queen g4 check and now after let's say you even offer a trade, uh, uh, white would happily trade and after rook captures, yes you are down a piece but uh, I mean your position is, I mean look at this pawn, the other rook comes uh, very easily into the game, it's still not at all clear how black will develop and it's uh, n no one plays this with black. So instead Giharo goes knight to a6, now you can even have support for pushing c5, uh, and now just rook captures on a5, it comes with the price of a pawn, h5 taking away this queen g4 check idea from Dubov, uh, and now queen to f3 going after the h5 pawn. So here Giharo defends it, we have queen to h7, and now rook a to d1.
Makes sense, you prepare a very nice rook lift with rook to d7, would come with a double attack. So rook a to d8, and now rook a back to a1, now defending that rook. We have queen to h6, probably with the idea of uh, maybe if the rooks get traded off, you still have defense of uh, the h6 pawn, maybe even rook to d2, a nice rook lift is an idea. All depends on what Dubov plays. Dubov plays king to f2. And now rook to d5 here. Now Giharu is threatening to double up on the d file. So rook captures on d5. And here uh, we have c captures on d5. And this all produced a, a completely losing position for black. So once again, feel free to pause the video here and uh, win the game for Dubov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. It's quite a beauty. So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the the exchange sacrifice. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's a rook captures on a6. And the point is, after bishop captures and queen captures on d5, uh, there are so many threats here. Like this is a threat, just a, a nice discovered check uh, and attack on the rook. And after rook to e8, you play queen d7. Uh, now threaten queen f7 check, followed by capturing the rook. And after queen f8, uh, you go simply bishop to a3. So it's a lot to find, but it's, uh, you know, such a beautiful position. I had to show it. Now, it doesn't really matter what you play. The queen cannot move because the rook falls. Uh, even if you play b4, the bishop just captures. You don't care. And after captures is just a beautiful sequence. Uh, you can either capture or even force uh, queen f7 check first. Uh, and now it comes uh, king h8 check. You capture with check. King here, check. King here. You grab this with check. King here, check. King here, you grab this with to check and now it doesn't matter what you play you have uh, six pawns for black's bishop it's of course uh, completely winning after this black doesn't really have uh, much moves to play so after c captures on d5 rook captures is winning uh, but duo first played rook to a5 so he almost played it but he stopped at the a5 square and now he allows uh, Giharo to play knight to c5 and get the knight away from there. However, Giharo decides to go for d4. He gives up the bishop on b7 and now all, uh, prepares to bring his queen over to e3. So again, it's a very, very nice idea. And uh, um, uh, I, I have to remind you, this is a rapid game. So you don't, don't have all the time in the world. You have to calculate quickly. Uh, Dubov goes for it. Queen captures on b7. Queen to e3 check king to f1 and here d3 threatening to pick up this pawn and now for the last time feel free to pause the video and find the only winning move for white here while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not playing something like pawn captures here. Uh, and for those of you who found queen to f3, congratulations, uh, you win this game. Uh, problem is, uh, if you go for something like uh, captures here, uh, it's not going to yield all that much. Queen captures on d3 check, and you're just going to allow the queen to continually check you. Check, 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 check. And I mean, it, it will be a, a, a draw by, by perpetual checking. So after d3, queen to f3, only winning move for Dubov, and now queen to d2. Uh, again, capturing doesn't really do all that much. Uh, you don't really gain anything. For example, captures with check. You're going to capture with the queen, and there's no continuation here for black. No, no useful checks, no nothing. So here, instead, after this queen to f3 move, we have queen to d2, now attacking the bishop here. Uh, and here, uh, Dubov just captures the knight. Rook captures on a5. Queen captures on b2, and now queen captures on d3. And now, as you can see, uh, it's, uh, it's a funny position, but uh, Dubov's pawns are simply too strong, especially the past e6 pawn. So here we have rook to c8, preparing rook to c1 check, but Dubov says, that's nothing. I'm just going to push my pawn, and even if you deliver this check, I'm just going to move the king. There's no continuation here, no good checks. So after e7, we have rook to e8, blocking the rook, but now rook to e6. Dubov is playing this very carefully. A lot of moves are winning here. King to f7, and now queen to f3. Going after the pawn here. So here, uh, Giharo remaneuvers his queen. Queen c1 check, king g2, and queen back to h6, defending it, but now queen d5, threatening a lot of nasty discoveries here. King g7. And now queen captures on b5. King back to f7. Now again queen to c4. Again threatening some nasty discoveries after the rook moves. So here rook captures on e7. But now just rook to e4 check. 
uh, this is uh, you can win this position a lot of ways uh, rook to e4 is just the quickest because here uh, I'm, I'm just going to show it because it's very instructive for new players uh, it seems in for new players it might seem like this is a chaotic position but for example uh, if black plays something like king to f8 you immediately win the game just queen c5 the point is you uh, now pin the attacked piece uh, and the next move you're just going to capture it because you have five points your opponent has two so if your opponent doesn't want to get checkmated he has to defend it you just trade everything captures 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 and captures and now this is a completely winning king and pawn end game so you don't re you don't even have to calculate anything if you have a position like this you're up at least a pawn or two you always have to check if this works so of course uh, king f8 uh, is not played by giharo giharo goes king to e8 but it doesn't help all that much queen to g8 check king to d7 and now just rook to d4 check and it was in this position that uh, David Anton Giharo resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. He's getting checkmated. We're going to show it because I know you guys enjoy to see the full sequence. For example, queen to c8 check, king to b6. You're going to get rook to d6 check, king b5, and now a nice beautiful checkmate. Queen c4 check, king a5, and rook to a6 checkmate. So yeah, uh, that's the sequence, but after rook to d4 check, uh, Giharo resigned, and what a what a wonderful victory for Daniel Dubov, and uh, I knew uh, uh, as soon as I saw the position uh, there, uh, let me just rewind that a little bit, uh, yeah, here, when I saw this move, this uh, beautiful idea of uh, f5 and then d5 when d5 was played i knew this was going to be a spectacular game and dubov delivers uh, as always uh, so yeah, once again uh, i do hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank ryan goggins uh, vibas patil james chambers jim stewart and john nelson for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage uh, of the uh, showdown checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world and just in case we don't show any more games here are the standings Nakamura leading uh, the tournament alongside Levon Aronian, uh, Daniel Dubov and Temur Rajabov, all two and a half points out of four. Then Wesley So with, uh, uh, and Wesley So also with two out of four, so five of them uh, sharing first place. Then with two points, uh, Alexander Grishuk, Magnus Carlsen, Pentala Hare Krishna, and Yanni Pomnishi with a one and a half point, uh, Maxim Vashiel Lagrav, and currently last place with one point, uh, Anish Giri and David Anton Giharo. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's uh, it for this video. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.